Welcome back to Beer Brackets, everybody. We've done some amazingly huge can versus bottles in our time, but Alessandro, today we have quite, quite the juggernaut of a can versus bottle. You can see the beers that I have in front of me here, these delicious, delicious looking beers in green. Today we are going to be comparing the canned and the bottled versions of the Danish Pilsner, Carlsberg. Man, I'm so excited for this one. Which one is going to come out on top here? I've learned with these, you can't never know what's going to happen. So, so true. You, I'm excited as you are. Like, can't wait to jump into this. <laughs> you can't predict it. You can't predict it. I'm sure no matter where you are in the world, you can probably head to your corner store and find some Carlsberg. So people are probably really familiar with this one. And I think this might be really interesting for a lot of people out there to see which one comes out on top. So if you're going to the store and you're trying to decide which version of Carlsberg should you get, which one is better, which one do we prefer, we are going to let you know. I think we should crack these beers open and let's get right into it. No time to waste. <laughs> Let's do it. It's Carlsberg time. Oh. If you're curious about the history of Carlsberg or want to know a little bit more about the brewery, I'll put a link to our review of Carlsberg, which if you haven't seen already, would have dropped very recently on the channel. So this is completing our Carlsberg series. Ooh. Oh yeah, you know what? Nice. Just the aroma. I'm pouring out the bottle first Ooh. here and already the aroma is nice and strong. Ooh. I'm really curious to see how it stacks up to the can. Let's see, let's see. Not too much room out of the can right away, but that is nothing surprising. Yeah, it always tends to be a little bit more muted, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Seeing right away that just pouring out the beer, I don't know about you, but the can version is so much more carbonated. You can see here yep. I have this really huge fluffy head on the can version. Look at that. Yep. <laughs> Big difference. Let's do this. I'm excited. Let's get right into it. Aroma cheers. Aroma cheers. Let me know which one you think Aroma is preferable. Cheese. Ooh, hmm. yeah. Quite different, mm -hmm. quite different. I know, right? Surprisingly, like pretty different. I would say, I don't know if maybe the, the bottle that I have like compared to other green bottles, but I would say at least for me, it's the skunkiness is a little bit less prominent. Yeah. Uh, but but it's it's still there a little bit on the can like uh, I get more of that clean crisp here. classic uh, pilsner yeah including exactly. that maltiness um, that I attribute more to Danish style pilsners they tend to be a li slightly more sweet really? on the nose at least for I me. didn't know that I didn't know that Danish style pilsners were a little bit more malty I don't know that's how I perceive them <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's to, you know, your uh, first hand experience that's totally valid yeah I, I didn't know could, that you know if I think about uh, you know a, a German pilsner I, I think like there's a little bit more hoppiness definitely yes, more on the Czech ones like 100 uh, yeah a, a little bit more malty let's say not yeah. necessarily sweet but maltiness uh, for sure but yeah, yeah that get all of that in the can in the bottle i get a little bit more of that like skunkiness so i think i'm going to stick with the can here to start what do you think really friend? okay interesting one point for the can to start off with i i think there's not that much skunkiness on my bottle too i did get a closed case of 12 so just to be upfront about that, I think if you had yep. an open case, like a six pack, where maybe the beers were a little bit more exposed to the light, you might get a little bit more skunkiness on the aroma and the taste of the beer. Actually, you know, the aroma on the bottle is giving me like a lot more of sort of a bready maltiness. The can is interesting though. The maltiness is a little heavier. It's a little richer. It's almost like a little sweeter on the bottle, I find. And on the can, it's almost like you get a little bit of a mix of the malt and the hops. I'm a little mm -hmm. torn here. I don't know which one. I think I'm going to go with the bottle. I'm actually really appreciating, almost like I did with Heineken. I'm kind of appreciating what the bottle brings to an aroma. And maybe it has to do with the skunkiness. I'm not sure what, but it's just, it's a little bit maltier in a way that I like. That's so fair. I'm going to go with the bottle on this one. So it's tied. One, one. All right, buddy. This is the part that we've been waiting for. We are at the taste. <laughs> cheers, my friend. Cheers to you. Double cheers. Let me know what you think about this delicious Danish yes. Carlsberg. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, again, quite different. What do you think? Quite different. Um, I was going to say they're kind of the same, but you, that's you, interesting. Uh, you find, you so find tell me. I'm, I'm dying to hear. How do you find that they're different? So... I find that on the bottle, uh, I get more yeah. on the, and without getting into the finish, but the sweetness, yeah. malt sweetness comes across, or breadiness, like you described it, comes uh, yeah. way more up front on the can. It's there up front, but then it transitioned into that clean, crisp finish with a slight yeah. bit of hop yeah. presence, a little bit more refreshing in a sense. 
So I'm gonna stick with the can here. Like I think I've, I'm 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 enjoying the way the can like uh, you know it's it's playing with the elements. What do you think, my friend? You're absolutely right. Like there is like a bit more of like a sweet breadiness from the bottle that I'm getting. And on the can, it's like I find it's a little bit more balanced with the hops on the taste. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a much more clean, like I said, clean, refreshing sort of, without going to the finish, it's sort of like a clean, refreshing cut at the end of your tasting experience. So I'm going to go with the can as well. I, the can is leading right now, my friend. 3-1. The can has a healthy, healthy lead. But now we get down to the mouthfeel. And you know what we got to do for the mouthfeel? Here? We got to do a little <laughs> yes. bit of a refresher. It's a classic, classic beer brackets tradition. It is a classic. And we must pour out to refresh our mouthfeels before we engage our beer barometer skills. It's look at that. Needed. All right. Yeah, look, at, look at that carbonation on the can. <laughs> it's so much more carbonated. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, that might be a little bit of an omen of what's to come here, but uh, mouthfeel cheers. And let's see, which one do you prefer? Mm. Yeah. Again, like I don't, I don't know if I'm imagining it, but and maybe it's just because I saw it visually, but the can has more carbonation, more it's more presence. And yeah. The, the bottle feels like a little bit more, a little sticky, a little bit more sticky in a sense. Yeah, it's got that sticky mouthfeel for sure. Um, so, yeah. um, which again, like we're, we're talking about small differences. We're not, uh, we, we're analyzing the same beer, obviously, but but there, there is a difference. And I, I'm going to stick with the can still. Like I, I like how that plays in within the game with all the elements and elevates the, yeah. a little yeah. bit of the presence of the beer on the palate. 4-1 for the can so far. It's got a pretty healthy lead. I don't know. The bottle's going to have to get a couple in a row here and go on a bit of a streak to catch up. I think it's kind of like no contest here, and I think it's another point for the can. Just the higher level of carbonation just creates a much more refreshing sort of crisp mouthfeel. On the bottle, it's a little flatter. I mean, you can see right here, you can see after I poured them out, but also just comparing the two, like the size of the head on them, just sort of how much the carbonation is sort of active within the beer after pouring it out. This is a pretty healthy lead, my friend. I think the bottle's going to have to pretty much take all of the remaining points to catch up and have a chance to catch up. So let's see the finish. Who's getting the point for you for the finish? I find it interesting in, in, in both. Uh, and I mm-hmm. don't know the fact that maybe like you, uh, I, I think I got a, a, a six pack, like, so not, not the 12 pack that was closed. So that, yeah. that might influence a little bit that skunkiness, maybe a little bit more prominent. I find it. It definitely does for sure. Being exposed to the light. Exactly. Absolutely. So yeah. I find the skunkiness the open. being a little bit more present on the finish for me, which again, like we're, we're talking like a, a small percentage, but but it's definitely there. That that might play into the factor, but I th- still think I'm going to go with the can because I like really like how it, it that crisp, clean finish in this kind of like very uh, summery, refreshing type yeah. of beer, like, like just you know, leaves you wanting for another sip. Uh, Well, there we go. I mean, the can at this point, the bottle has no chance of coming back. So the can's pretty much won this battle. So let's see how the remaining points shake out. I think I'm going to have to agree with you. My bottle isn't as skunky as yours sounds like it is, but it's more just, I I don't know, something to do with the can version of Carlsberg. And this isn't always the case with our can versus bottles. Actually, a lot of the time, the bottle tends to be kind of the more preferable version there. You get a little bit more flavor in the bottle, usually like we saw with Coors Light, for example, like we saw with Budweiser. In this case, um, I think the can is just a much more well-rounded, balanced beer. And I, I got to give the point to it. I mean, in terms of a finish, it says you get a little bit of hops, you get the maltiness, all the standard sort of Pilsner. I mean, Carlsberg isn't a very flavorful beer in general, but I mean, all those things that you would expect to get from a Pilsner are there in a very sort of light, really well-balanced, refreshing, crisp way. And they're all present on the can, but the bottles, just, you, you get a little bit of that sticky sort of extra mm-hmm. bready yeah. maltiness that just, it, it comes off as slightly a little bit more unbalanced. So as an overall experience, my friend, I mean, the bottle only got one point out of it. I know intangibles come into play in the overall, but what do you think? As an overall beer experience, which one's superior? Well, uh, let me start with the the why. I think that for me sets these two experiences apart is the the way the hops are showing, uh, mm-hmm. in in the sense that uh, they're both like you said, it's a beer that is it's it's very simple uh, but uh, very e- effective in what it does, and I think that yeah. it, it's effective because it shows a little bit of all those elements. So, I think in one of those two versions, the hops are shining a little bit more. While in the other one, yep. the balance is a little bit more towards the maltiness, uh, a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. So I think it that's what makes 
the can for me the winner. You know what? I'm going to throw you a little curveball here. Even though the bottle only got one point in this whole can versus bottle, as an overall beer experience, when you factor in intangibles, I think I'm going to have to give the point to the bottle. And I'll tell you why. I will I tell you why. It. I want to hear it. I want to know. <laughs> I know, you wouldn't expect this, right? But I'll tell you why. I really enjoy that extra character that you get from the clear, either green or clear glass bottles when it comes to beer. And we saw that with Heineken where we gave Heineken in the bottle the victory on that one. I really enjoy that extra little bit of skunkiness. I really kind of enjoy that extra little bit of sweet maltiness that comes from it. I think it just gives the beer a little bit more kick. It gives it a little bit more character. When you're comparing them, side by side category by category in this case of course the can came out on top because it presented everything in a much cleaner much more presentable way but as an overall beer experience i kind of enjoy the character the imperfection that you get from the bottled version of it as a one-off drinking one carlsberg i think i prefer it out of the bottle even though the points landed as they did so there you go everybody a landslide victory for carlsberg in a can my friend this was a really fun experiment i didn't know which way this was going to go but we tackled another major major beer brand here and we solved an age-old age-old ancient beer mystery of which one is preferable the can or the bottle Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. If there are any other can versus bottle battles that you would like us to do, let us know down below in the comments. We will get to them as soon as we can. We're all about it. We're all about getting together as Always. friends and having a beer, Always. having some good conversation and solving these beer mysteries, these ancient beer mysteries. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. And don't forget to close your beer brackets. N never, never forget.